Ainsley was here and because she says she has a meeting and so she really wants to be here. Um, okay. <laughs> says we're live. <laughs> yeah, she, Jeremy's like, come downstairs and see me. And she's like, no, I have a meeting. <laughs> so she thinks she needs to be up there. I, so we have, I have like 15 minutes of footage from various days of her doing book talks um, that I'm, uh -huh. I've got saved on iMovie. Yeah. Okay. That's I awesome. I have us as live, but it's not showing on YouTube. Is it for you guys? I just got notified that you're live. Okay. Okay. Well, then we'll just start. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Chloe. If you are here, then you probably know me because it's on my channel. But welcome to the very first ever Book Sisters Book Club discussion. So today we're here to talk about, yeah, we're here to talk about The Lost and Found Bookshop by Susan Wiggs. And um, we have thoughts. We have thoughts. Yeah. So let's just go around and introduce ourselves first. And then... Um, then we'll go from there. So, Sarah. Hi, Sarah from The Bookish Knitter. Um, welcome, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Bree. I'm falling for romance on Instagram. Awesome. Yay. Okay, wait. It just went live for me. So now I'm going to make sure we're muted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just did that myself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, and you guys will notice I'm wearing, like, real headphones instead of my... Uh, Whatever is because I am so paranoid about like the echoing with uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> my whatever's and whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> little ones. My, Air my AirPods. I can't. So, mm -hmm. hello, hello, everybody in the chat. This yes, is so exciting. So, um, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, we have thoughts, right? We have, yeah, we thoughts. have thoughts. <laughs> so, okay. So, we talked, and we think the way we're going to start each book club will be just to tell you guys a little bit about the author. And then we'll, t because this is the book sisters, we want to make sure we're focusing all on women authors. And so um, we want to talk about who they are, you know, what their history is of writing and all of that kind of stuff. Then we'll tell you guys what we thought of the book and we'll just go from there. So um, Bianca, it didn't finish. Okay. I'm really, really <laughs> excited to hear everybody's thoughts, but first, exactly, Sarah, exactly. Sarah has the most history with Susan Wiggs. So she's going to tell us a little bit about Susan Wiggs. Yeah. I wrote some notes down, so bear with. Um, her first book was actually published in 87 and she wrote a lot of historicals way back. Um, I think she's best known for the Lakeshore Chronicle series, which is my favorite series of hers personally. She's won the Rhea award, which is the, okay, I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> Do you know what it is, Brie? Like what the acronym stands for the romance? You keep talking and I'll Google it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's but won it a number of times. Right? It hmm? is. It changed, right? Is that the award we just changed? I think so, yeah. Yeah, bear with. Um, do, 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 do. Awards. Uh, yeah, the Rita. The Romance Writers of America. Yeah. Yep. She's been named twice in the Romantic Times uh, for the Career Achievement Award winner. So, you know, she's written a wow. ton. She's written a children's book, you guys. I didn't know this until I started researching her that um she wrote a children's book about columbus and a canary or something it wasn't well received let's put it that way according yeah. to goodreads <laughs> yeah and she went to harvard she graduated yeah. from harvard university and she lives in washington i think and what i love and i think you pointed this one out brie her mother maintains her web page <laughs> oh really <laughs> which i think is delightful I know that. <laughs> yeah that's awesome well because how old is she um she was born in wait did i write that down I want to say it's 58, 50, yeah, oh, really? 1958. Yeah. And that's not that yeah, old. We were like, her picture, she's gorgeous. She is well, feeling it to be however old she is. Not yeah. to jump into the book yet, but did, did you guys pick up on, in the book, she's talking about the author guy, and she says, oh, oftentimes the picture is out of date or is touched yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I have not that I would know. <laughs> I laughed at that so hard. I'm like, well played, well played. <laughs> well, because 1987, Brie, is that the year you were born? 86. 86? Yeah. yeah. So she's been writing a minute. <laughs> been writing. I'm 34 this year, y'all. Oh, man. I don't want to go there. But anyway, so let's <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. named after RWA's first president, Rita Clay Estrada. But they thank you to the Vivians. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Thank you, thank you. 
Cool. Okay. Well, I think we've got a variety of opinions here. So <laughs> let's talk about um, how many Susan Wiggs have you read and what were your expectations for the book? Sarah, go ahead. You go first, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> this was my 21st. I think out of the three of us, I have read probably as much as the rest of you, com of the two of you combined. <laughs> she was actually my introduction into contemporary romance um, with her book, The Winter Lodge, which is the second book in the Lakeshore Chronicle series. And I read that when I picked it up on a whim because it was like, even back then I love like the festive, Christmassy, wintry mm -hmm. covers. And I saw it in a bookstore and I picked it up and I loved it. Went back and read Summer at Willow Lake, which is still hands down it's one of my top 10 books of all time. So going into this wow. one, I'll be honest though, I did not have extremely high expectations because all the stuff by her that I have loved was her older work, not her more. I mean, I liked Map of the Heart, but I haven't absolutely loved her newer stuff. So that was my take. Like I I knew I was going to like it, but I, I had a feeling I wasn't going to love it. So okay. let's put it that way. Interesting. And I'm seeing some in the comments say this is their first. So um, I'm really interested to hear those perspectives. Too. Please read more from her. <laughs> yeah, this is oh, like, this is a good place to start? <laughs> no. Yeah. So recommendations you coming read? later. Recommendations coming later. <laughs> I thought, so this was my third. Oh, God. I see somebody DNF map of the heart. Yes. Thank oh, you. No, it was thank so you. good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Veronica, man. This was my third. So Map of the Heart was my first. And I loved it. And then I read Family Tree and now this one. So And did you like Family Tree? I loved Family Tree. I did too. I, Tree. I haven't read it yet. It's right here. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It is. Good. It is. I think there might be a novella before that because I see a book on Hoopla that sounds like, Chloe, you remember everything that happens at the beginning of Family Tree? It sounds mm -hmm. like it's before that, like when the couple meets. So I guess I maybe need to go back and read it, but Sarah, it's so good. <laughs> so I will get to third. it. This is only my third. So this is my 10th and I have loved, um, I've read one five, one four and the rest have been three or less. And so my five star was uh, family tree. And then a four star was Dockside, which is like number four in the Lakeshore Chronicles. I mm -hmm. accidentally picked it up, not knowing. And so I really like that. Mm -hmm. Everything else, the other eight, I'm like, suck, suck fest. <laughs> and, so, but, and yet I had super high expectations going into this one. Cause for me, like a book about books or a book about bookstores is always like, that's one of those buzzwords that I love. And so I'm like, okay, she writes good. Well, maybe good romance women's fiction. And it's about a bookstore. Like, how can you screw it up? Well, well, let's yeah. answer that question. What did everybody rate it? You in the comments too. Tell us what did you rate it? I gave it a three. I did three too. I gave it two and a half. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little more of a hard A <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to it, but, um, yeah, so so let's just get into it. Um, why why the cool response from all of us? Well, well, first, can one can one of you give a summary of the book in case people have not read it and are joining us and potentially maybe still interested? Because I this book I think maybe has an audience. Um, yeah. It's just not me. <laughs> Fair. And see, that's got, so one of the conversations that we had was like, okay, Sarah's been, you've read so many of her mm -hmm. and your, her older stuff is like the stuff that so you, good. you love like the most. And it's kind of like our Queen Debbie May Comber conversation. Right. Like, at like, you're still writing and are you still writing because you have that audience who's going to like your ride or die, they're going to buy whatever. But like, for readers like us, it's like, um, maybe every two years put out a book, like give it time. Cause yeah. it's yeah. as good as your older stuff. So 
I don't and know. I honestly feel like in a way that this book is very difficult to summarize it because is. there was so much. And that was my biggest qualm with the book is that it's, it, I, I hate to say it, but it was like watching a kid who's got like ADD, like <laughs> focus on one thing because yeah. it jumped a lot in my well, opinion. Or it was her being like, I want to write about this and I want to write th about this yes. and I want to write about this. And so yes. I'm going to just put it all in one and yeah. make some convenient connections just to make it work. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. The um, gist of it is, is our heroine, Natalie, is unhappy with her job. And then, and it's dating someone, but she's realized that she's like mentally checked out of the relationship. It's just time to part ways. Is it a spoiler if I say what happens? I don't know. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure it's the catalyst. Hold yeah, on, let me read the back of the book. And you continue the, talking. Her life changes. Like, there you go. She loses, you know, two very important people in her life. That's the gist of the book. <laughs> yes, yeah, so she, yeah, she inherits. People. Yeah, yeah. She loses these people. And then um, she oh, inherits no, this bookstore. And so she has to go, you know, she takes a little break from her life, goes to this bookstore. And um, we see the relationship with her grandpa. We see her time in the bookstore. Um, we see some secrets about the bookstore. And so there's historical sections as well as present day sections of um, the family lineage, as well as what's going on now. Um, and some of her and a love triangle and like she's got a lot going on today too that has nothing to do with all of that or any of the stuff before so uh, there's just a lot going on so, and i also felt that it was misleading like i'm just looking at the back of the book and we i mentioned this earlier to you guys but like right here it says if you had to start over what would you do and who would you be okay well she is starting over but she didn't choose to start over she mm -hmm. was being forced to start over so i think that's very misleading yeah. In a way, you know, like it, it I might have gone into this thinking, oh, this woman's just going to decide to give up her career and she's going to go and do this. But no, there was a huge catalyst that forced this decision on her. So circumstances, you know? because the circumstance, it's now like your life before and now your life after these mm -hmm. circumstances. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's like her learning how to cope, not mm -hmm. her making a decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think that is definitely misleading. Um, I'm just reading some of the I'm like, why can't I read the comments? Oh, maybe I should put my glasses on. Um <laughs> okay, so Berna said, I really like the male main character, but it needed to focus on the romance. Yeah. Um, which male, Berna, which male? <laughs> which one? Because there was the two, right? Because there were, there were at least two, yeah. Peach and Trent, uh, Trevor. Uh, yeah, yeah which movie. Peach just cracked me up. There's I liked Peach. I liked him far better. I yeah. Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy was I good. love Dorothy. So, yes, she was a delight. She was my favorite character in the whole book. Yeah. <laughs> or the grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why three is the kiss of death for me. Um, for sure. For sure. And like this one, there's a few things that stand out that I really didn't like, but um, there's just like I like we had a hard time even summarizing it. So yeah. I guarantee in a week I'm gonna be like <sighs> Well, the that's book the thing. Where so much crap happened that I don't even know. When I was reading it, I liked it. I didn't, I wasn't hate reading it. I enjoyed it. But in a year from now, am I going to be like, oh, yeah, remember that book? No, I won't be at all, you know? Yeah. Um, the dynamic between Natalie and her grandpa. Yeah, yes, that was good. Yes. That was good. Although, so do we want to get into spoilers here? I mean, I feel let's like this is talking. Let's talk. Go ahead. Let's just, so you know what, at this point, yeah. If you have not read the book, sorry, either go read it or if we've like deterred you from reading it, then we're going to spoil you. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I really liked the grandpa too. Mm -hmm. But when the mercury poisoning thing came out, I was <gasps> like, God. what? Like, I'm sorry. That is a cop out. Like, mm -hmm. That is emotional manipulation to be like, yeah, he's got all these things. Like he's on the brink of death. He's all and then, tremors and blah, blah, blah. And and then, I mean, I guess he still does have dementia, but like, then it literally said something about like, and within the next day, he was much better. Like, and it was like, wait, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, uh, what? So I really liked the grandpa and, but, and I like started to feel for that relationship. Mm -hmm. And then when that happened, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, so not talk about the grief. Cause I think that we that all was a huge, yeah. So 
what do you think is the best way to write grief? Because she's dealing with grief and guilt because before the, the situation, she was ready to break off the relationship mm -hmm. and then the circumstance happens. And so now she's living with that. You can talk about it. We're, Don't we're just talk about it at this point. They okay. died. They died. Her There'd be some death. <laughs> He died. Yeah, he gone. She was with him, and then she finds out that he had a ring. He was going to propose, and so that happens. But then it, it just then she just moves on, right? She just like <clears throat> moves on, but there's a little bit of guilt, and I just I don't know. It was weird. I was like, I don't know if this is the right way to do it. So we talked about. I mean, the three of us anyway are all married. And so we have talked, we've talked multiple times just within our boxer chats about times when marriage is hard. And so it's like, you think about that and you think about somebody who was so like invested in a relationship, but that they were going to buy a ring, but also some, the other party being so like checked out that they're done. Yep. And so it's like, if you are in that position where you're done and then somebody dies, would your thought be like, Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for, 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 for taking care of that for me. Because that's totally how it came off. Yeah, like, don't have to do that. There's one thing I'll try to do I'm pretty with. sparkly out of it, too, that I can now hawk at the store. Right, right. And so, like, it felt very much to me like, she, like that was like, at first, she was like, oh, like, you know, it mentioned her guilt of, like, how do you deal with that? And then it's like, well, you deal with it by going under two other guys, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> no I, I was like the first, so I kind of checked out after the whole Trevor come to the bookstore and read thing. I was like, Oh, this is, this is the part they were talking about is like mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. But I was like, and the further I got into it, I was like, did we even have to have the boyfriend in there? Like it just, yeah. Yeah. I think it was you who said that. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it, was like a oh to to feel extra sorry for her. Not only did right. her mother die, but they needed a reason for her mother to be coming. And I think that he just happened to be the reason that yeah. she wrote that. Do you know it was he was just a convenient plane driver, plane flyer person. <laughs> right. Well, and yeah, we. I, I mean, we had talked about um, just. I think it would be more. Um, like it would serve her purpose better if she had loved him like and had been very like torn up by it because she mm -hmm. loved him so much. Um, but the whole guilt aspect, like I think most people would feel some guilt or some something besides relief that kind of seemed to come pretty quick. Um, what do I think about the whole like very beginning of the book, the work situation? Like, what did y'all think about that? As someone who's worked a lot in an office environment, I can absolutely, that was very true to a lot of places I've worked, at least from what I've seen from other people. Uh, you know, I can just, I just feel that a lot of coworkers can be very catty and very petty. And I'm not just talking females. A lot of males do it too. And when you put those kind of people, like if you put, you know, and I think she was a hard ass too, which does not make it easy, especially when you're the big boss, right? So, you know, I, I felt it, it was a little over the top. Like the fact that she kept fixing the one girl's stuff. I'm like, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah. What I are you doing? Like, I'm like, 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 like no. a lot of context. Like, is she a hard ass? But then she literally covers yeah. up. The so it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. Like you can't do both, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought it brought up an interesting point of like how reliant we are on other people's approval. Yes. Um, and other people liking us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting. But uh, yeah, the rest of it, I was like, mm. like, I, it, it made her character confusing from the beginning. Yeah. Yep. Was like, is she this? She's just like, oh my God, am I a bad person? Like, nobody likes me. And I'm like, really? It took you overhearing this conversation. She to realize that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's, but that weird juxtaposition of like her being a hard ass and then her like covering up for somebody, like it just didn't make sense to me. Um, let's see. So, 
mad she cussed out her boss when he wasn't even the one who was so yeah. awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, Elizabeth. Uncalled for. Like, what are you saying? Very uncalled for. Him for like, <laughs> he's not the one you're covering up for all the time. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? Um, do you guys think the ending, like, what do you think of the fact that it was somewhat ambiguous? Like, we don't know if she goes back, but you can assume. And, um, like, what what do you what do you guys think about that? Y'all, I'm gonna be honest. I got to the point where I was like, so we're finding boxes behind walls and like oh, yes. the DNA test was done. Like, what is going on? Yes. <laughs> it was all yes. wrapped up in a neat little bow. Here's your box. Here's all the multiple you know, things so familiar. Multiple. Yeah. Very valuable yeah. boxes in the walls. That over the last hundred plus years, no one Nobody has found. found up until the last three months. <laughs> when, when it's in dire straits and they need the things, they found multiple boxes Was in the walls. Was this a Hallmark movie? Because it feels like a Hallmark it's movie. It's like not even that good. <laughs> yeah. Hallmark movies are good. Yeah. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. So from... Map of the heart, and I think I think a little bit of in family tree. She's obviously obsessed with mm -hmm. like family tree stuff. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But I'm like, does it have to be in every book? I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But I can say, from reading so much of her backlist, <laughs> she loves history. You can clearly see she used to write historicals, um, and not even just like the ones that you've read, like Map of the Heart and The Family Tree and stuff like that. Even Summer at Willow Lake has a huge aspect of it that goes back and forth in time with the family. So it is a huge, it's it's like a theme that runs through almost all of her books. I can tell you that. So yes, Great. it's a thing. Great. I'm going to love even more. I like, <laughs> and this is why. See, like, that's what I love. Right. So, right. <laughs> well, and I did that video about like breaking up with authors and it's like, why do I keep doing this to myself? I clearly <laughs> am not a huge fan of hers. And yet I have like 10, you guys, like, what am I doing? <laughs> Jeez. I think um, that I need to explore her backlist because it sounds like in her heyday, she was great. And I think this could have been great. Okay. I had potential too much. Like she was just trying to do the beginning I thought was great. Like, yeah, yeah. I think there were things that I didn't like necessarily agree with, but I was like, I can see what she's doing. Like, she's really reeling me in so that I feel for Natalie. Like, the got beginning me. of the book brought me to tears. And then you know? it just kind of like it peaked. Yeah. It was just like, throw this in there, throw this in there, <laughs> throw this in there. And I was like, this is just too much. And I, was she close with her mom or no? I, I couldn't tell. Like, at the beginning, you felt like, Oh, my mom's flaky and she wasn't going to be here anyway. Like mm -hmm. almost like the two of them had not this great relationship, but then all of a sudden it becomes, we had the most amazing relationship. Okay. Again, which was it? Like yeah. I felt I read both. Does that make sense? Yeah. That bothered sure. me. Well, and yeah. So it's like those kind of juxtapositions that like held me kind of at a distance where it was like, I get that I'm supposed to care about this chick and I'm supposed to pick care about, you know, the grandpa mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, but I don't. And like, so let's get into, we talked about, um, somebody said a while ago that they love single dad stories and I do too. I love single dads. And we talked about Dorothy being one of our favorite characters. She and was a delight. I love that. And like for them, I did feel the emotional connection because it, you know, that, that father daughter relationship is special. And, but we have a gripe about that too, because Dorothy, <laughs> Dorothy is talking about she goes to school and she gets made fun of for only having one parent. And she says other people have two parents, a mom and a dad, two moms, two dads, whatever. And then here I am with just one parent and I get made fun of. So I want my parents back together. And what? Like they live it in San takes place in San Francisco. San Francisco. 2020. In 2020. Yeah. Like they, who, what? and like, if you go into a classroom, I would say, I mean, depending on the age of the kids up to like half of them are from single parent households and, or split, you know, split households or whatever, but whatever, like, yeah. 
What? Like, and how much of the book did she waste not knowing he wasn't married? Why did she assume? She even yeah. comments the fact he doesn't wear his wedding ring. Oh, he probably doesn't wear it because he works. No, he probably doesn't wear it because he's married, stupid. Like, just freaking ask. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Oh, my That's God. Like nuts in any oh, book. that not drove me crazy. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, you know, that keeps them at a at a distance because I'm a junior mayor. I was just like, girl, oh, fuck him. <laughs> the thing is, too, though, is that let's pretend for a second that he was married right? Mm -hmm. She was having, in my opinion, inappropriate thoughts about a married man. If she thought he was married, she shouldn't have been, you know what? It's, it's, one thing to look at the guy, yeah. it's one thing to look at the guy who's doing your drywall going, yeah, okay, not bad. But another to <laughs> continuously have these thoughts yeah. that bothered me. But I think the fact he wasn't married as a reader, we were supposed to make it be okay. That's yeah. just my opinion. Well, and uh, I'll put it back up. Elizabeth said, um, that for 75% of the book, she didn't know he, he was married, not married. Um, but we knew from the beginning. That's right. Like, yeah. yeah. That it it, it would have been better if we were left in suspense too. Like, is he, is he not? What's going yeah. on with his wife? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. because we knew it was like, this is stupid. Just ask. Yeah. Is it yeah. disrespectful to just be like, Hey, you know, what? my apologies if I'm stepping on toes, but are you married? Is it yeah. to ask? Yeah. Well, especially, yeah, no. And he watches, she watches those two women come into the bookstore and he gives the phone or like, I know he gives his business card, but regardless, you know, like, and then she's thinking to herself, oh, but he's married. But, you know, and <laughs> sorry. That it's wife, like, crazy. It's just, I think assuming either way is silly. Like, just ask. Yeah. At the end of the day, just ask. Silly. Oh, that drove me crazy. That was, that was my big, it made my eyes roll every single time. <laughs> yeah, there was one yeah. part about like how when Dorothy's dad, when Dorothy's dad, when Peach went to pick up Dorothy from school, he'd have to like park around the corner because he's like, yes, workman. I was like, really? Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's, silly. it's San Francisco. It's our Kids are mean. So, yeah. yeah. And that's to be fair, yes, let's, you know, cut some slack, but still. Yeah. But I, I mean, out of all the things to make fun of a kid about, I wouldn't think having just a dad would be would be the thing. But, but to be fair, they did like, you know, the author made sure to be like, you know, have the characters go. But that's OK. We're a special family anyway. You know what I mean? Like to really hammer home that point. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. What did you think about Dean? Like her dad, that whole situation? Um. To find out that like he was actually in love with her mom and that the mom was like, no, stay with your wife kind of thing. What the hell? <laughs> you know what? To be fair, leopards don't change their spots. So if he had split with the wife and went with her, what's to say he wouldn't do it to her? Yeah. So I think the mother was being smart, yeah. to be yeah. honest. But maybe let the let the father into her life. That's that I think is maybe not the good thing about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm trying. Like, she's grown. She spent her entire <clears throat> life having like, because her dad wasn't there. She's always told herself a certain thing about men. And then now she's yes. an adult who finds out, no, like he wanted to be there. My mom said no. So it's now mm -hmm. like you got to kind of do a way of thinking. Cause it's like, it wasn't really on him. Now mm -hmm. he was married, <laughs> but you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was it was a lot. Yeah, well, yes, it, it it was just a lot. Like you think again, about, there's so much going on. Here. Yeah, because we hear about the grandpa and his two wives, and um, then the dad and his two wives. You know, like <laughs> and then her and her dead fiance. Not there was yeah. there was a point yesterday. I was listening to it finishing it off. I'm like, wait, who the hell is Andrew? Oh yeah, wait, yeah. it's the grandfather. <laughs> I'm like there are yes. too many characters here. Yes. I need I need a roadmap of the characters, please. <laughs> yeah, like Andrew Gandy. Yeah. I think that's what it was. No, it wasn't Andrew. It was Dean. When he shows up with his grandkids, and I'm mm. sitting there going, "Who's Dean?" And for a second, I thought it was the author guy. I'm like, the author has grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> I was totally confused for a second. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Let's see. 
Yeah. Um, this is probably true. I think Agreed. Natalie's relationship with her father caused her to shy away from love herself. That yeah. could be. And I have to wonder, true. you know, you can't read into a fictional character that much, but with the mother making the decision that she made not to let the father into Natalie's life, was it that her way of keeping Natalie with her so it could just be the two of them? So you're my child, you're going to be with me and I, you know, we're going to be a team, you and I kind of an idea, you know, cause she was raised by a single parent. Right. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we have, um, it was long, not long enough for everything in the book and no, I, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it was Veronica maybe earlier who had said, it felt like a very long book. <laughs> Especially it, on audio. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. It was a 12 hour audio book and um, only like 360 some odd pages, but mm -hmm. it felt very long and yet not long enough if it was yeah. going to tackle everything she wanted to tackle. Okay. Um, did y'all think she would, she would have gone over and met her dad's grandkids? I think she, I, I think, yeah, I don't know. I was wondering about that too. I was like, yeah, but she did. I mean, I don't know. And then like when she was little, she was, she was on the same soccer team as her brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then told her mom, like his real kid is there. Like I'm not going. I was like, yeah, I, I, the, I hated that too. The, 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 the real kid thing. Uh -huh. You're a real kid too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> yes missed opportunity for a series perhaps although i don't know that i would have cared for a series but i think it would have been too much yeah it's again she was trying so to write more yeah she was trying to write more than one book yeah yeah because taken in parts i would have loved just natalie's story if we took yeah. out the extra historical stuff and then on the flip side the historical stuff is what I was more interested in. Like when they started getting into Colleen's journal and stuff, I'm like, Ooh, now I want to know that could have been a completely separate book, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the yeah. grandfather's relationship with, with the, with the, oh, what was the Chinese woman's name? May. Yeah. I think yeah. So. I would have loved oh. to have read that. Yeah. Elizabeth. Uh, it is a part of a series. Uh, Elizabeth and I read the first one and hated it. <laughs> See, I read the apple orchard and I didn't mind it. Oh, okay. But I wouldn't know if this, I wouldn't go into the saying it's part of a series because you would no. not have had to have read the first two. Yeah. You didn't like, have to read the apple orchard or the beekeeper's ball. I mean, those two characters are mentioned, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely companion, but you are right, Elizabeth. It is part of a series. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Go ahead. I liked the, I think the part about this that I love was just like, it's a book for book lovers. <laughs> it is. It is. Mm -hmm. That was like the saving grace for me. But other than that, I was just like, damn, this was a disappointment. What was that yeah. review that I shared with you guys? It was like a two or three star review. And at the very end, she's like, I, like I love the, book. the bookstore. <laughs> That's how it ended. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, and it had so much potential, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, if she could have just focused in on like what she actually wanted to write about, then that would have it could have been really good. Yeah, I think I don't know. I, I always think of the books that I've read that had like a similar theme. And I think of like Cottage by the Sea by Debbie Maycomber. And at the very mm. the character loses her entire family. And you really see her like grieving and that survivor guilt. And I like didn't really feel that with this one. I didn't really feel it. Like I was unclear. Like, is she close with her mom? Because I don't really feel like, like I don't really feel like she's that upset that her mom is gone. See the thing, and and at the beginning of the book, it hit me emotionally, and I had a really yeah. hard time with the first few hours of that book because it it delves so long on the funeral and whatever. But I, I mean, well, I felt for her knowing what it's like to lose, you know, it was the grandfather when the grandfather got up to do his eulogy and he starts saying, you shouldn't be doing this for your kid. I was driving to work and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, for me, and again, I've talked about this before. If you've experienced that kind of grief personally, and you've experienced recently, 
it's going to hit you harder than it's going to hit somebody else. I um, love the scene with Gandhi and Dorothy because you know with dementia they do say eventually they get to a point where they're almost kind of childlike, and she says. Did you have fun getting that old? And I was like, <laughs> she was just, she was a doll. <laughs> Her yeah. in the bookstore were my two favorite characters. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There were just a lot of times too, where I felt like, um, I just didn't know Natalie at all. And like, yeah. I, um, after her and Peach hook up for the first time, they go smoke weed. And I was like, wait, yeah. what? I came out of like, nowhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, whatever. Do what you got to do. But like, what? It's a, it was the same as if, and then we decided to go skydiving. I'm like, right, right. And then we won a million dollars. We look like your mom and our mom was dead. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could have got what? more of mom. Yes. <laughs> yes. The <mother> was fun. <laughs> <laughs> mom story please yeah right yeah, it was like, like what she did a really good job of like letting us get to know her mom through like people her mom spent time with and i was like yes. oh, i really like natalie's mom <laughs> like cleo and was it cleo and birdie were the two people who worked in the bookstore uh -huh. i really like them too yeah yep yep i think we yeah. didn't get a chance to know natalie because there was so much going on or what I think I, so. Well, I think it was partially that, but then partially the things we've talked about of like, is she a hard ass? Is she a softie that covers up for people? Is she this way? Is she that way? Like, does she love her mom? Like she loves her mom, but like, is she close with her mom? Is she not close with her mom? You know, there were a lot of things that, yes, there was too much going on to like really dive deep with anybody, but also what we did get was a little like, what? Yeah. So I don't think we were given a chance to get to know her. Yeah, because it was too much. Is it a woman's fiction or is it a romance? It's a women's fiction, in my opinion. What do you think, Chloe? Because you read more than us. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because I don't feel it. You know, like I feel with, like with women's fiction, we really have to walk in a woman's shoes and um, like know her story. Whereas this was not her story. I mean, it was her story, but. It was, I don't know. I mean, th th this is where the line is so gray. And this is where I, why I'm saying to me, in my opinion, it's more women's fiction because the romance, if you want to call it that aspect, happens like here in the book, like in this last tiny, tiny little part. Like that's, they're flirting with each other, but there's no growth of the relationship. That's true. Yeah. No, I would probably agree that it's women's fiction. Because I'd say it's, it's definitely the gray area. I think it's a... I don't, I don't think it's either. I think it's a shit, shit show. <laughs> no, <laughs> because it's don't. like, we don't really get what we need out of a woman's uh, fiction and we don't get what we need out of a romance, but. Yeah. So what, what, if, if this was like a five-star women's fiction, what is it missing for you that read it so much? Like that kept it from that. Yes. Good question. Um, it's like you've done this before. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, so we talked about early in the book, we talked about in women's fiction, typically, um, typically we, something happens where that endears us to the main character. So something happens that makes us feel sympathy or empathy or whatever for the character. So that happened in this book. And so I think if we would have, like, we started off with that strong emotional bang, if we would have gotten to continue just following Natalie and her story with the bookshop, with the romance, with her grandpa, whatever, but like really just focused on her story and really gotten to like hold her hand as we go through this, um, it would have been a lot better. And, and if it was just a little bit of like, like, let's just think this through. How would I feel if my mom and my boyfriend that I was about to break up with died? And, you know, like, I just, I feel like in order for me to have loved it, it has to have some semblance of like, this is how an actual person would feel. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was missing. Do you think maybe it was more about the bookshop? I would have really liked to see that, but, and trying to save the bookshop and yeah, to make it a women's fiction for me, it would have been about getting to know Natalie and her journey 
Um, and I mean, from the title and from the back of the book and stuff, you were kind of led to believe her journey is dealing with this bookshop. So if we would have focused in on that, that would have been great. So, cause we, so like in romance, we see a lot of like, I inherited a B and B or I inherited a cafe. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe with this book, because she was grieving and feeling guilt, usually it's like, I inherited it. I'm, you know, they've had some time to like process it. And it, it kind of like symbolizes like moving on and starting over, like inheriting something and building it back up. But like, it was failing and she was grieving <laughs> and living with guilt. And so I think she was trying to like make us sympathize with Natalie and like kind of get her to grow while also trying to save this failing bookshop. And then her grandfather, who's her only family is losing mm -hmm. his story. And it was just like, I need to just focus on like one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. But yeah. And Lizzie said, uh, we felt sympathy, but then she'd turn around and do something unlikable. Like it just, we weren't allowed to like fall for her. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to always, I mean, so we don't always have to like a character, right? No. But like, no. Even if, so if it's somebody that's, you don't necessarily like or relate with, what then keeps you reading the story, like the story itself or, or what? I think the character arc of like, we don't have to like her, but to see that she is trying to do something like whatever it is or trying to improve <clears throat> herself or something in some way, like, and seeing that at, at the end of the book, she is not the same as the beginning. Um, I think that's why I would keep reading if I didn't like her. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I didn't not like her. I just, I think like you said, Chloe, I never, usually I try to like be the character, like be in their shoes. And I never felt that. Like it was very distant. Like I was reading about Natalie versus like reading from Natalie's perspective. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, for me, it was actually the history. I wanted to know more. That's the story I wanted. You know, I could have, if this had been written about the grandfather and his relationship with his first wife and then his actual relationship with May and the family, that would have been the story that would have gotten five stars from me. Mm -hmm. But I kept reading this one because I want to know more about that. And I mm -hmm. also, I, I have to be honest, her writing is fantastic. You know, the story may not have been fan great, but her writing is fantastic. And that kept me reading as well. So, because I think she's a great writer just in general. What about you, Brie? I, um, so like I said, I kind of checked out after a certain point. Whatever happened with the whole DNA thing? Because I was like, somebody's black? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, what happened? Yeah. And I was did, like, any, did you, okay, now, I know you said you checked out, Brie. Did you find that convenient, Chloe? Not convenient, but you know, like, I just thought, I don't know. That's how I, I feel. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just another one of those things that it's yeah. like, what? Yeah. 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 Again, too much. And again, if we had gotten Colleen's story with this, you know, well, her, yeah, after, and it's her like, black okay, husband. Let's talk about that. Like, let's talk about that. This black history and that kind of thing. Like, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Not yeah. like, let's mention it and move on to the fact that, you know, their marriage wasn't legitimate and this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, but, but, but wait, let's talk about that some more because it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. We like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It, it's a, yeah. There's just so much that I'm like, why was that even in there? If you're not going to expand upon it, Thank you know, you. I, I, yeah, I felt like it didn't make any difference. Um, I think, I mean, I feel like it could have, but. Yeah, it, it didn't advance not. her story. Yeah. And yeah. that's the whole point is that events should take place that advance the story. If you're just throwing crap in for the hell of it, mm -hmm. that's probably, she was, Susan Weeks was probably smoking weed and that's why she included it. <laughs> right. <laughs> she couldn't smoke it. <laughs> she had a day of writer's block. Like, what am I doing? I'm just smoking some weed. Yeah. Maybe uh, she was setting up for another book, Elizabeth. Good point. Maybe. Maybe. 
Maybe, but Vern had a bookish crush on Peach. Yeah, I think we all liked it. We liked us some Peach. A yes. single dad, a single dad will get you every time. Although I do have to admit, when I first heard his name, I went, really? Yeah. <laughs> not the I like, I like, I like rewound the audiobook. I'm like, did I hear that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you big sexy man, Peach. Peach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when they, when he explained it, I was like, that makes sense. When he explained yeah. it, but when he tried to explain it, <laughs> his friend called him Peaches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. I have to admit, when he started explaining, I'm like, he was in prison, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reed Sweet says she would have loved to have had more of a story about the history of the bookstore and all the different ads. That oh. was just a story on the history of the bookstore would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, from the title, The Lost and Found Bookshop, that could have been this story. Yeah, yeah it could have been, except we got Natalie. Kind of, <laughs> did we? Sort of, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even know. <laughs> lots and lots of loose ends, um, and that's true. So maybe it'll continue on, but it's like I... I don't even care because I like it. Didn't yeah. I will. I will go on and read the next one if there is one. Thank you. And I'll report back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah, take one. But see, it's like we were talking about at the very beginning. There are those diehard fans of like Debbie May Comer who will read all of her stuff. There are diehard fans right here of Susan Wiggs who will read all of her stuff. And that's me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I'm a sucker. And there are people who don't like her, but we'll continue, continue to read her. Yeah. And that's me. <laughs> and then there's Brie who will wait to hear what we all think about it before yeah. she decides yeah. to dive in. Brie <laughs> is the only intelligent one in this group. <laughs> I may or may not give it a chance. Yeah. So, so I have the lake, I have I have seven of the Lakeshore Chronicles on my shelf. I don't know how or why. But so I think I'll read the first one. And if I don't love it, then I'm I'm unhauling this seven. I'm so afraid now that you're going to hate it. <laughs> it's like one of my yeah, top 10 favorite know, books of all yeah. time. <laughs> I just want to tell you. First book in that series. Summer, Summer Lake. 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 Okay. I see so, no Barnes and Noble, but I don't ever think it's like the first book. It's like, it was, as far as I know, on Audible Escape. So if you want to get to it, well, you can. In the, next, the next month. month. <laughs> and it's a long, it's a but it's a long book. I think it comes in around 500 pages. Okay. Um, so I want y'all to read The Good Guy Quilt. And I have, Elizabeth, I think that one's about a mother-daughter. Is that correct? Still, there's three stars. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> you Sarah, had me at quilt. Do you, like, so for you, like, do you can you notice the shift of, like, when it stopped being good? I don't know if I noticed the shift. I, like... The tail end of the Lakeshore Chronicles, I mean, they're, well, they're still good, and I read through the whole series, but I found once that series was over, and she started writing, it was like right around the apple orchard, is when I started to see the slight decline. The other one that I read, oh, I read it for um, uh, Amish in April, um, y y uh, Between You and Me, and it was an Amish one, and it wasn't bad. Didn't love it, but it wasn't bad. But I've just, I don't know what it is. Maybe because, maybe part of it is that because her older books, I read them at certain points in my life and they tend to, do you know what I mean? When you read a book at a certain time, it tends to mean more to you. Maybe that's why, but I do love her older stuff. And, and I think really it's been in the last five or six years or so has been the, they're not so great. You need to do a reread and test that theory. I have reread Summer at Willow Lake and I still absolutely love it because I love Olivia and Connor. I just adore Olivia and Connor. You know, there's just couples that like, you know, stick with you. And they are one of those couples. <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a childhood sweetheart story. Oh, the man yes. I love it. Yes. I need to interrupt this conversation to tell you, I said it before we went live, but I think I'm going to be wearing this hoodie every time because uh, K-State is playing right now. And we have it recorded and I just got the most tragic message. Breaking news from ESPN, K-State defeats number three Oklahoma at home. <laughs> so, what the hell? Somehow we won. And so, yeah. You gotta go. Okay. Like, but yeah, I just, like, okay, I gotta go. I'm just kidding. But yeah. I don't know that there's many bookish sports fans. So, if anybody cares, sorry, I spoiled that too. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I need to turn off my notifications. 
<laughs> hit, on our, hit all of our points because like I know y'all finished before me and I just kept hearing messages like Chloe was like I'm over this book I got an hour left and Scribe was trying to tell you not to finish yeah. it Chloe <laughs> yes. yes it's just Scribe, scribe whatever, whatever kicked me out like six times and I had to delete the app and restart. It kept saying like something is wrong. <laughs> I was like, yes, something is wrong. <laughs> something is wrong. So yay or nay on <laughs> if you're a Susan Wiggs newbie, start with the Lost and Found Bookshop. Start with somewhat Willow Lake. Start with Just Breathe. Just Breathe was so good. Um, it's about a single woman who finds out her husband. Is, well, okay. So she's married, literally walks in on her husband cheating on her. Within a few days, finds out she's pregnant with their twins. So she goes back to her hometown. It's another childhood sweetheart story. Goes back to her hometown to spend time with her two elderly aunts while she has her babies and re reconnects with her childhood sweetheart. Delightful. Um, and, uh, for anyone who's in the military or who has family in the military, I absolutely recommend the ocean between us. Please read the ocean between us. That book made me cry. I've read it four times. It makes me cry every time I read it. Aww. The husband's in the military. He is stationed on an aircraft carrier. And at the beginning of the book, something happens to him. And then it flashes back to the beginning of their marriage and how their marriage has fallen apart and how... And that's all I'm going to say. And it's, but especially, I think if you're in the military, you can um, empathize a bit more perhaps with the situation and understand what her as a military spouse was going through the main character. It was so good. Um, There's my recommendations. So I read <laughs> just breathe and gave it three stars. <laughs> Shut up, Chloe. <laughs> I just think Chloe hate reads everything. <laughs> I, like, how am I not catching on that I don't love her? Guru. She's our guru for women's fic. Right? I guess that's but why see, I don't consider to be just breathe women's fiction. Just breathe was a romance. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think I read, maybe I read Family Tree and then was like, oh, this, this author knows what's up. Or, or I read all the crappy ones and then read Family Tree. And then I'm like, <laughs> maybe, maybe. That was your five star. Family yeah. Okay. I can't give up on people. Hate reads. Is that a thing? Yes, yes, it is. Three stars is a good rating. Yeah. Three stars is average. To me, yeah, it's a book right. that you didn't hate, but you didn't love. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you've given it like one or two stars, yes, then that was a book you didn't like. But, you know. Well, we gave it 2.5 stars. So. so, for me, for me, a three means like, <clears throat> eh, it was okay, but it wasn't good or bad. It was entertaining enough. Like, mm -hmm. read it if you want. And two and a half is like, no, don't read this. You know, you know, like it too is like, I really didn't like this. I was like skim reading, didn't want to, you know, whereas two and a half, I'm like, I, I read it all, but I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. So, so what is our October pick? Okay. <laughs> so, I, know. <laughs> I know what it is. Okay, because so, I know Chloe sent me a message. She's like, "Oh, you're gonna love what October's pick is." <laughs> so let's look up and tell everybody else our process. So we had a Zoom call, uh, I don't know, a month ago or six weeks or whatever it was, and we had all brought a ton of different titles to the table for October, November, and December. And so I said, "What about Verity from Colleen Hoover?" And Sarah said, "Nope, nope, not doing Colleen Hoover. Don't like her. Not doing that. She's horrible. <laughs> She's a horrible author." I've never she, read her. <laughs> she, she's read one and hated it. Was it was bad. Hated it. <laughs> and so, but then as the conversation rolled around, she was like, hey, that premise sounds good. It's a thriller. It's not her typical kind of book. Go ahead and put it on there. So October's pick, guys, you picked it's Verity. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, it is available, I believe, on um, Kindle, it is on Audible Kindle Escape. Unlimited, Audible Escape, and yep. um, I think on Kindle Unlimited, it also will read the audio to you. Like, I think the audiobook is free as well, potentially. <laughs> um, Verity so. is not good. <laughs> like, great, I'm gonna go into this hate reading it. <laughs> Verity, Verity is not good, Antonella. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. 
three stars on Goodreads. Yeah. What's that? Four point three three stars. Yeah. So, but, 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 I'm gonna preface that there are a lot of Colleen Hoover fans for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There so, are people across the room gave that book five stars. <laughs> Maybe someday was a piece of garbage. I'm sorry, and I will stand by that till the day I die. <laughs> uh, gosh, you know, she is one of those authors that is very divisive. Like people either yes. love her or hate yes. her. Yes. And so I see we have a couple of haters. Um, and no, I'll read it and I'll give it a shot and I'll try to go into it with a clear mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. A couple people have already read it. I'm I'm honestly really surprised that you guys picked it. And it it won by setting us up. Out. What? <laughs> They're setting us up. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, this one's on you guys though. <laughs> mm -hmm. All so, right. We're gonna so did, did the voting already close for November and December or do, do no, people still have time? It, okay. We all close the Friday before the live show. So October's closed yesterday. November's mm -hmm. will close the Friday before. So if you are not happy with October's pick, get on right now on Goodreads and yes. um, vote on November and December. Please. They are up there. Um, mm -hmm. And at some point, where do we go vote? Um, go to our Goodreads group. If you are not a part of it, just search the Book Sisters. Um, I think the link is probably in our announcement videos. And when this goes, when this goes, um, when we're done, I'll put a link in the, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, our Goodreads group, it's got polls for November and December. At some point we will get together and probably do another two or three months out. Um, because we always want to make sure that you guys have time to vote. Yes. And to get the books, um, and all of that. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, and we want to do themes. I mean, so if y'all have any ideas for themes, like we yes. have an idea for like, you know, doing a throwback to books we didn't read as kids or teenagers mm -hmm. or you know, new to us authors. If y'all have mm -hmm. ideas, definitely let us know in the group. That's yes, how we're please, doing. please. If you haven't seen October's is creepy, November's is nonfiction, and December's is Christmas. And so we have those ones picked. Um, we have had a lot of different conversations about what to do in the, the following months, but we need more. So let we're us, always open to suggestion. Yeah, let us know. Let us know what your thoughts are on themes. And then we will again come together and pick three and go from there. So yeah. Um, well, unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about or anything else, sorry, <laughs> you guys, I'm really sorry. We kind of picked a dud this first go around. We're not trying to pick bad books, but uh, and the funny thing is, but, but I have to say though, in a way I am glad we decided to do this because this is what made us decide to do this book club was the mm -hmm. fact that all three of us wanted to read this book. So if yeah. it did anything, yep, it, started <laughs> it started the book club. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, the uh, Antonella is, is, is cracks me up. Like every time I read a book and she has read it, her review on Goodreads makes me literally laugh out loud. Like I messaged her and said that. And so the fact that she really didn't like this one makes me nervous, but really funny. So <laughs> okay. fingers crossed. Yay. Um, okay. Well, yeah, keep on the Goodreads group. Thank yes. you guys for joining us today. Um, and that's it. We'll see you in October. Yes. Oh, Thanks, everybody. Wait. We'll see you in two weeks on the second. Yes. On the second Saturday of the month, we will be back here on my channel with some sort of discussion. Um, yes. We have the three of us have like tons and tons of topics, so we will come back on the second Saturday. And also, if you guys have anything you want us to talk about, let us know. Yes. Let, Post it in the it, Goodreads group and let us know. Group, if you have any discussion things you want us to talk about, um, the second Saturday we will be doing that, and then. Um, the fourth Saturday, it'll be on, on Sarah's channel, the discussion of Verity. So we're all just maybe going, it was crap. Like, yeah, Sarah, <laughs> we're going to hope Sarah doesn't cancel it because she hates it. <laughs> Sarah's like, I'm out. I'm not talking about this. I'm just going to sit back like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, or you're going to be saying, I told you so. No, you know what? I guarantee that's what's going to happen. I'll be like, oh my God, it was five stars. <laughs> yep. I'm going to be like, I love it. You're going to love okay. it. <laughs> I, I, I guarantee I'm going to love it. Um, okay. If you have a topic, put it in the Goodreads group and we'll yeah. see you next. Yeah, send it to us. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye.